Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Mrs. Coghill Farm. I am Brooke, and today we're gonna go away from the farm. And where are we going? Well, gonna head on over to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, where Head Family Farm resides. And y'all come with us and see what we got going on. So as we're on our way to Tuscaloosa, there is a birding hotspot that's on the way, and it is called Harris Lake. It's in Maplesville, Alabama, and it's somewhere that Mary Carl and I have been only one time. And honestly, we didn't know if this was, if we were trespassing, if the owner would allow us to come on this property. We, we were just kind of confused, but there were a lot of spottings on eBird for various species here. So um, on our way to Tuscaloosa, Mary Carl's desire was to stop by since it is on the way and oh my gracious invaluable um i'm sorry so much valuable information that i have found out here today there is someone that's the president of Auto alabama audubon that's here there are numerous photographers here and we have found out that the owner loves for people to come here and photograph and see the birds that are here. So I'm gonna flip a screen around and show you guys uh, some of the birds that are here now. Of course, it's 10 o'clock in the morning and my desire now is to bring her back at daylight, which is when the, the president of the Alabama Audubon said that it's most active. Okay, so you can see Mary Carl and Jason over here. Mary Carl with her camera, there's another gentleman with a, y'all hear that? Another gentleman here with the large camera. And that is because this is bird heaven. There's a lot of marshland over here that has dried up from the drought that's allowing fly larvae and other, other sources of food for the birds that reside here through migration and also permanent residents. Um, gosh, I don't even know what all is here. I know that there's a white fronted goose that's not something that you see every day. There are some American avocets. Um, I heard him say that there were some pippins flying over, which is something that birders desire to find out about. And the most valuable piece of information that he told me is that they have a birding group that we could become a member of that allows her, her to interact with other birders. And there's even a, a young girl that's about her age that's up in North Alabama that she could interact with and, and maybe even become friends, who knows. Um, they share the same interest and it's just gonna be great for us to be able to to have somebody or a group of people to go to for her, what I believe is going to be a lifelong hobby, maybe even a career. Who knows? What are the other ones? Abacets. Abacets. Thanks for them too. That's one so that's the greater white-fronted mm -hmm. um, geese, right? Mm -hmm. They're swimming right there as a juvenile and an adult. Is that correct? I don't ask. I don't know. <laughs> I thought that's what you said. <laughs> she may ask. Yeah. yeah that's what she said. And then what are these out there in the middle of the island? Mallards. Mallards, okay. And some domesticated geese are out there, she said. Well. And then that um, Ibisets. American Ibisets. And everyone's got the beak that curves. Uh huh. They're out there. That's something that she was proud of to see That's in Panama City. Yeah. yeah, he said those are really rare to be out here too. And there's some Muscovies, isn't it? Swimming over there. Wow. Look at this one flying over. That's a snake bird, a common. I'm getting better. Well, the gentleman I was speaking to over there said it won't be long before we'll all have our own pair of binoculars and this will be a family hobby. Yep. Okay, we have arrived at our destination and that is Hillcrest High School in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, where Eleanor Head, the daughter, the only child of Jacqueline and Zach Head, is participating in a 
well, beauty pageant. So we're gonna go in and see how she does and uh, see all these pretty little ones doing their thing up on stage. All right, so we're we're done with the beauty pageant, and if you can hear the background, you guessed it, we're back at the birding hotspot. We were able to pick up some waders that we've been looking for for a very long time in Mary Carl's size, and we haven't bought any because she needed to try them on. So we were able to, to pick some up, and um, I'm just gonna show y'all why she needed the waders. She's, um. She's off. <laughs> I told her, I hope she realized that she can get stuck out there. And Jason and myself are not in any kind of footwear to go and help her. Look at all the different ducks. There's even a guinea up here in the road in front of me. It's mingling with the mallards. Boy, he doesn't fit in. And you can see Mary Carl is over right there, walking, trying to get a closer picture of some of those birds that will be gone after this next cold snap comes through in Alabama, which is expected for Tuesday. So between Saturday, which is now, and Tuesday, we're gonna go from 60 degrees at night to approximately 34. So these birds that are not even supposed to be here now will be gone after that. And they just flew away. Hopefully she got some good pictures. You can see them flying. I don't even know what, what those were, but I'm sure we'll find out here shortly. Is it? Oh, I see it. You see the redhead duck? Is it straight ahead? Yeah, off to the left oh, a little bit. I do see it. I'm scared if I go up there, they're yeah, all going to fly. I guess I need to get me some birding clothes. <laughs> I guess some camouflage. If I'm going to continue to be this mm -hmm. driver for two more years. <laughs> All right, Mary Carl, what is this? This is a red-headed duck, or I think it might be a canvas bat or something of the sort. But you've never seen one, have you? Mm -mm. Wow. Beautiful. So it was worth us stopping a second time, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Did you see anything else that you There's did not see? There's white-fronted geese over there. Uh-huh. It's more than this morning. Is it? Yeah, I can walk down there. And what else? Uh, there was two northern shovelers. Two northern shovelers. They were a little too far away. There's blue winged teals out there. Blue winged teals? Mm -hmm. Did you get pictures of them? Uh uh, I think they left. Okay. But there's American avocets. Okay. And I did not know they swam. <laughs> huh. But you see they're feeding over there now. And which ones are they? Farther or The ones that kind of sway their beaks back and forth. Huh. And we saw them in Florida, but they weren't swimming. Right. All right. So this is the American Ibisets that you did not know swam. Mm -mm. And you got some good pictures of those. There were some in-flights, but they weren't very good. Oh, wow. Well, And just across the road from the wetlands, there's a dam that leads to a beautiful field 
where we were told earlier there are meadow larks and numerous songbirds and that's that plans to be her ne next stop um, which is at daylight in the morning so I'm sorry this turned into another birding video I promise for a aviary update soon a lot's happening there and I can't wait to show you guys but today just kind of turned into beauty pageant slash bird pageant okay what better way to end the picture taken with a close-up of a greater white fronted goose yep they're also known as a speckled belly speckled belly because you can see the oh speckles. i see the speckles on its belly and this is a goose that's not supposed to even be here correct not this far south the farthest they go is the tennessee river in decatur all right so, so decatur alabama is as far south as they're supposed to go and then i got some really good ones of the avocets oh wow mary carl the reflections awesome i know oh um, you got lots of good pictures so um would you say this is as good of an experience as it was at saint andrews yes <laughs> all right we're real close to our house so this is great to have found a birding hot spot that we can just pick up pack up and head over anytime we desire so uh what you thinking daybreak yes <laughs> y'all know where i'll be i'll be the driver for the next two years for a birder <laughs> <laughs> me carl do you are you happy to have your waders i am <laughs> you know what this means, right? I was right? scared I was going to get stuck, but I didn't go any farther out. Well, I said earlier I was scared you were going to get stuck because all I have on is tennis shoes, and that's not going to help me very much. So <laughs> now that you have some waders, there's no telling where we can go, right? Right. We just got back to the farm, and it is just about dark outside, but I had to show you guys the wonderful sunset. And then on the other side, the beautiful moon. Isn't it beautiful? Wow.